Serendipity is an important part of creativity. When we're thinking about building a networked note-taking system in order to come up with better ideas, we need to engineer serendipity into this system. Well, how do we do that? That's what I want to show you today. If you're just joining us for the first time, my name is Matt. I'm a university professor, and I am taking a deep dive into network note-taking systems. We are using David Perel's essays as seeds for our growing knowledge graph as we explore how to build this within Obsidian. Let's build serendipity into our system. David Perel recently completed a project where he wrote 50 short essays around ideas of writing and how to become a better writer. He's an online writer who has a popular course called Rite of Passage, where he teaches students how to become better writers. We're using his essay project as seeds for our growing knowledge graph. Today, we will be using essays number 21 through 25. I've already included these essays into my knowledge graph, as well as put them in my table of contents. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and pause the video and do that now. I want to show you two ways that you can engineer serendipity into your note-taking system for discovery. Let's first look at the five essays that we'll use to seed our knowledge graph today. In the first essay, The Islands and Bridges Strategy, David discusses how he writes these islands of information and then uses connections between these islands, the bridges, in order to come up with good ideas. David describes in this essay, practice analytically, perform intuitively, how in golf, practicing using data and science and analytics can lead to repetition and pattern formation that then ultimately results in intuitive play. In the essay, Writing Makes You a Better Speaker, David describes how writing down an idea is going to prepare you for when you need to speak about it. In the fourth essay we'll cover today, Write While You Walk, David describes how he uses walking as a way to overcome writer's block. This is an old and well-known practice that has been leveraged throughout time. In the last essay, The Right Kind of Original, David describes how Yuval Harari's book, Sapiens, is acknowledged as not providing any new information, but just reinterpreting that information in a way that resonated with people. So it's these five essays that we've now included in our knowledge graph, and I want to now explore that knowledge graph with you. As I described before, we have a table of contents that is now listing all 25 of the essays in our knowledge graph. We're halfway there. I want to show you now the graph view, and the graph view is going to be the first way that we can explore and serendipitously discover connections between ideas. Let's do that now. In order to navigate to the graph view, on the left-hand side here, we can click on the button that looks like a little network graph that says Open Graph. And here, we can zoom in and explore some of the different ideas that are present within our knowledge graph. Let's find that last essay that we just looked at, the right kind of original. That's this one here. If we can drag and like reorganize this, we can see that it has two different ideas. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Uh, three different ideas that are attached to it. So the first is it links to our Perel table of contents. Okay, not surprising. That was one of my hesitations in including a Perel table of contents is that we would have a single node with several different edges around connecting these ideas, but really that doesn't help us understand and connect the concepts within these essays. However, it still serves a useful purpose to allow us to quickly navigate to different essays within this project. So if we ignore that for a moment, and we can look at the two ideas within this essay, one idea is originality, and one idea is called voice. So it turns out that voice is going to be a common theme that David has explored in several of these different essays. And we can then see that voice is also related to unique and differentiation down below. Anytime that we click on any of these nodes in the graph, it's going to lead us to that note. So we just clicked on voice and we come to the note that has voice in it. If we navigate to preview mode, we can click on any of these links and it can then lead us to the next note. So this is going to lead us to unique. The unique can lead us to writing and writing can lead us to process where we can think about the difference between processes and systems and so on. So you can see the serendipitous flow from an essay to an idea to another idea and so on. So we might now have some connection of an original idea that's leading to your voice and this voice can lead to unique and unique can lead to another idea. And this is gonna then lead us to process and system. So perhaps we want to then establish a, a process and develop a system that will allow us to develop our unique voice, something like that. 
So that's the first way that we can use serendipity and engineer serendipity into our note-taking system. The second way is something I've recently discovered that I'm really excited to share with you. We need to go into some of the settings of Obsidian to turn on a specific feature. Let's do that now. So we now go back to our knowledge graph and we want to click on the settings icon in the lower left-hand corner. This is going to then allow us to turn on some core plugins. One of the plugins that we want to activate is something called Random Note. So if we scroll down and we find Random Note, you can see it's toggled off right now. We just toggle this on and we can exit. What happens is we now have a new icon in the left-hand side here that says Open Random Note. This is a little dice. When we click on this, it's going to open a random note in our main pane here. And this can then be a way for us to rediscover something that we maybe haven't thought about recently. So this was quite serendipitous. We rediscovered the essay, Rediscovering Your Weird. If we do this again, we can now pull up, let's say, a note. So in our system, we have both essays and these atomic notes side by side. So we open up the note intuition, and we might want to add a little bit more to it. So in this case, intuition defined as pattern recognition is not my definition, but this is a definition that I came across in Dan Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. I might also want to add a little bit more about what intuition is, or maybe what the opposite of intuition is, or really sort of curate this idea a little bit. So we can add a little bit more about intuition here. We might say intuition is a thought pattern. Um, intuition can lead to bias. We might then have a note about bias eventually. This is sort of a, an orphan note right now. Uh, what else might we want to say about intuition? We also might add the essay we recently read, practice analytically, perform intuitively, because this is going to be a major part of intuition. So let's add practice analytically, perform intuitively. So what we've done now is we took the, the sort of single atomic idea, we've developed it a little bit, and we've added a few more links. Let's do this a few more times so that we can continue to be reminded of and to curate our notes to make them a little bit more meaningful. So there we have a few examples of how we can use the random note within Obsidian to open up a note for us, to serve it back to us, to really try to capture the serendipity, to enhance our notes, to enhance our connections, and really to enhance our chances of discovery. If you like this short video, let me know below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the icon in the corner and subscribe so you can be alerted when we release more videos on this deep dive into the systems that allow us to be more efficient and more impactful in our discoveries.